Hello everyone, this is Jozef Notch here and welcome back to the next part of this playlist where I would like to give you some information how you can become a Linux Pro. And in this video we will talk about how you can search for files in the terminal and also how to modify them. And now we come to the cool shit. I can promise you that. Okay, so let's get started. So here you see the background of Ubuntu and what I'm going to now open up is the terminal by clicking here or you can just um, type uh, press Control alt t and I will just bring this up to the left hand side and then open up not the Explorer because that's what it's called in Windows but the Nautilus here and if you remember back then in documents we had a couple of files. Now I created an another <coughs> folder and the backup folder so we can copy back uh, files if we destroy them. So if I go now into this folder and here now we have three or no, not three, four files, three is, uh, CSV files and one TXT files. But actually they are four text files. And what do we have here? If I click here, then we see we could open this up in LibreOffice. But what I actually want, I want to open it up in the text editor, in the Ubuntu text editor. And we will come to that in a bit. And I will open up all the other ones <coughs> here as you see so we have one it is a list of uh, values of what on the, in the first column from one until come on until 100 as you see here and on the right hand side you have some uh, y values and in the second file we are continuing on from 101 until 200 and in the third file we have some data but not as columns but as rows and then here in the txt file we have a couple of uh, words for example fire dragon food place hello there goo wishes and llama head and then the, um, the same uh, all over again and now we will work with these files okay so let's get started so the first command I want to show you is how to look for a file. So you might be a programmer and you have your own code or someone else's code which you want to extend and you want to look for a certain file. So for example, let's look for this text.txt file, and the command, and now I'm in my home. So we know that it will be in documents, but we don't, if you're looking for something, usually you don't know where to find it. So the command is find. And then we want to specify where we want to search for that. And if you want to search now in the folder where I am currently, so this is the home folder, then I uh, press dot. So I want to search here and then I type in minus name. And then in brackets, so in single um, apostrophes, um, and I type in text.txt. And as you see, we found it in the results folder and also in the backup folder. Okay, so, but in some cases you don't know the entire uh, name of the file. So in this case, uh, what you can do, you know, for, for example, the first half of the file name, then you type in text and then star. And then, as you see, it will look for all the files which has this string uh, at the beginning, and uh, which uh, is called then text. And as you see, in the VLC folder, there is also a file called text. But we also found OR files. Or, or, or file and we can also for example if you only know the first two um, letters then we can also search for te and as you see now we have a lot more files there are test files but we also found or 
text.txt, which is pretty cool. Now, if I want to search um, not in this folder, but for example, I know that it is in documents, then I can just type in documents and then it will look, look for this file in documents. And you can also enter entire paths. So for example, if I type in my home and then the documents you can look for entire uh, uh, you can put in entire paths to look through so this is the find command it is very handy if you're looking for certain text files or, or not just text files if any file uh, whatsoever okay so the next is now looking for something in a text file for example here in this case we have for example, llama. And I want to find the file which contains llama. So, for example, you are programming in C++ and you have a lot of header files which you include in and you know that you are looking for a certain class which is, for example, called llama, but you don't remember the name of the file. How to lo look for that? So, we want to search a lot of text files for a certain entry. So the command for that is grab and then minus capital H I R N. So the German word for brain and then the string we want to look for llama and I want to look everywhere. And as you see we have a lot of uh, results here <laughs> there are in VLC a lot of llama entries but now if I look for example not everywhere so this star was now looking in all the folders in my home but if I just look in documents now you see that we have now all the llama entries in this text file and also in the backup folder. So now we have this, it's that in document results text txt we have these llama entries and now we found the file which it contains and then you can just navigate there and then open up the file which you were looking for. Okay, so but what if you don't know the, the entire string you're looking for, you just know that something with la, la, then in this case you don't have to use the star and for example just for fun I'm just typing in the path and now you see la is being found in the text txt uh, but not just llama but also in place you have this la string so it also finds this. So with this, with this grab file, it, you can very easily and in a fast manner go through text files and search for certain strings. And then it will put out the string where this file is located. So if you, if you have a lot of files and you're, you know a certain part of the string you're looking for in that file, you can just use grab and then it will uh, immediately put out the path to that file. Okay, so that was now searching for a file and searching in a file. Now let's go to modifying a file. So, for example, I will go for that in documents and results. So as you see here, now we have the four files here. And as an example, for example, I want to take one dot csv and two dot csv and I want to attach the the, file, the results from two dot csv so continue just continue on at the end of this file so we had measurement data for example or any kind of data that you produced uh, it here it ends with 100 and we want to continue on but within the same file so we can more easily for example plot these result files how to do that there is the command called cat <coughs> yeah, it's not dog it's cat and then you can just type in 2.csv and then twice this sign and then, so this will write whatever is in 2.csv at the end and append it 
uh, to the end of one. So if I now press enter, and now if I go back here and open up one, you see that this was changed on the disk. And if I reload now, it starts correctly as it was. But now if I go down, as you see now, it is being extended with the values from two. Okay, so and, and this is pretty cool. And you can also uh, do this with a couple of files. So for example, if I want, to, if you have 100 measurement data, which you want to put together into one file, you can do this with one command. You just type in the <coughs> the file names here. So for if we just have now two here, so I <coughs> will append one, two, and then again one and two. So each file twice at the end of 1.csv. Okay, so you cannot append one, but what you can do, I will just copy, to, for example, to one one. And now uh, let's go back because now we did things with one. So I will just copy. This is why I always have a backup file here. So I replace now one. And we are back to the original version. And now, if I now append 112 and 112, so um, then what? Because, well, okay, let's just open it up. Let's take it slow. What is 11? 11 is the value from 1 until. 200 and then 2 is from 101 until 200. So now if I just append these four files to the end of one, now it changed. So at the beginning we had the data in 1.csv already until 100. Then we appended 11. So now we should go until 200. The data will go until 200 as you see here. And it ends at 200 and then we appended 2. So it, we again start with 101 and go until 200 and then and then so on. As you see. And with this now you are able to take hundreds of data files and then put everything together. So if I remember back my internship where I made uh, hundreds of measurements with, I don't know, 20 and 30 sensors, and I did all this in Excel with Control C, click, Control V, Control C, click, Control V, I, I did it for days. If I knew that this is possible to do uh, within a couple of minutes, I would have given everything for this information. So this is very, very handy to uh, combine data sets. Now what if I want to replace something? So for example, for a good reason, I entered here goo wishes instead of good wishes. And because now we can go and replace this with good. So we can now correct this typo everywhere. And the command for that is SED and then minus I and then three slashes and S and G at S at the beginning and G at the end. And now, and then the text file, which we want to modify. And now we want to uh, replace goo. So I just copy here this string. And this comes between the first and the second slash. And now I could just type in goo. But if it is a longer, um, string we, I can just paste it not with control V that doesn't work but control shift V will paste this string and I want to replace it with good so this is what uh, the first word between the first and the second uh, slash is what I want to replace and then the string between the second and the third is the string with which I want to replace the first string okay so if I now press enter and go to text, it was modified, and you see now that here you see good wishes.
and now we can just uh, replace anything so for example if I replace the fire dragon uh, uh, copy it and if I go up and then here paste fire dragon and I will I don't know with what external drive drive or you don't have to use two words you can external drive is great and if I reload now as you see the entire string was now replaced here so this is how you can replace strings in data sets okay so now let's go to this data because <laughs> I know in some cases you want to have measurement data or, or any kind of data which comes in as rows, as columns. And what we can do in this case, we can replace the spaces with end lines. So, so at the end of the line, there is a return, a new line entry in Linux, and we can use this and then replace the space in between the data. So what I want to show you is how can you transform data which comes in rows and then uh, create something that, uh, with the same data and create something uh, in, in columns. So for that we can also use this SED but now I want to modify three and now what we do we replace the spaces with backslash n because this backslash n is the sign in Linux for the end of the line. Okay, so now I press enter and now if I reload it, now we have it in one column. That's not what we wanted. Uh, so I will just copy the backup file here okay and now what i uh, i would do in this case i would save the first uh the first uh, um, line Control shift s and then save it as for example three minus one and then Control z let's go undo it and then save the second line with 3 minus 2 and now we can do the sed command and I could not type in a 3 minus 1 and then 3 minus 2 this would work but it's if you have 100 data files then with this star this command is being executed for all the files which have a 3 minus at the beginning so now reload now we have them in columns so 3 minus 2 and th also 3 minus 1 we have now columns here and now we how do we combine it and this is something that I want to show you now so for example to combine these two into one file there is this command paste and then 3 minus 1 3 minus 2. So these are the two files which I want to have in the uh, <coughs> text file and then again <coughs> twice and then combined 3 CSV and now if I open up this file this combined 3 now you see that we have this data out of so here, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, uh, eight, nine. we have it here as columns and in the second column we have the data from the second row. And so the, the columns are um, given by this order. So if you want to switch the columns then you just start with 3 minus 2 and then 3 minus 1. You can also use paste to, for example, paste the... <coughs> file data from these result files but ah first let me just copy the original files because then you will see more okay 
So we have now the data from 1 until 100 and then <clears throat> 101 and 200. So if I now paste 1.csv and 2.csv and I want to call it combined, just combined.csv, what we will now have is <clears throat> We have now four columns. So this is what you would do in Excel with uh, select one column, then copy control C and then control V in another column. But if you have to do this 100 or 1000 times with a lot of data sets, then this paste command is a lifesaver. Another lifesaver is the so-called for loop. So you can, if you know a little bit about programming, then you can run in C or C++ or uh, Python or whatever language you have a for loop. And this for loop does a certain thing, a certain command, a certain amount of times. And in this, uh, in uh, the terminal, you can also uh, execute commands a lot of times which you might think to yourself that it might be very handy if you want to do this uh, uh, change of, for example, um, Fire Dragon in 2000 uh, files. So you just change the same string in 2000 files. Instead of typing it in 2000 times, you can do it if you have a certain order of the file name. So for example, how to use this? So for example, for i, i is a variable that we just defined and then in, and then you can just type in what you want to use. So we could just type in one, two, three, and then six and nine or 36 for if you want, or we can just also type in strings. So one, two, three, and then, oh, it's not one. So one, two, three, and then we can also type in five, seven, eight, nine, and then semicolon, do, and for example, I will create folders with these names. And then you type in dollar $i, semicolon, done. And what this does, it takes these strings, so one, two, three, and also the numbers, and it inserts it at, instead of dollar $i. So we define $i, and then with dollar $i, we tell the terminal where to put in these strings and then we will create the folders. So enter and as you see now we have folders called 1, 2, 3 and 5, 7 and 89. This is great but if you are working with numbers you can also create a sequence with this command sequence and 0, 1 uh, or now maybe we have 1 and 20 and what this does it creates a sequence of, of starting at 0 with an interval of 1 until 20 so this is a sequence uh, we could have just typed in 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 until 20 but with this we have now a sequence and then how to create this sign so in my uh, the, this first one, this uh, on my German um, keyboard I have to press Shift and then the key left to the to backslash. But in the US and the UK keyboard, this is located to the left of the key one. So check it out, and I have to press it twice to get uh, this sign once. So just test it where you have this key it's a very unusual uh, symbol but this is what you need for a sequence and if I now type in uh, press enter you see it created the files 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 until 20 and because we already created 5 and 7 it's script it skipped it and now we can <clears throat> be very creative. So for example, in I can now create a, uh, an empty text file in $i and then text file $i and we don't want to create it in every folders, just in every second. So with this now, if I 
take a look at uh, all the folders, what's happening here. So we started at zero, there we created a text file in one, and then we jumped with an interval of two into the text file, uh, or into the folder of two, where we created a text file two, and then here in four, text file four, six, eight, and then 10, 12, until 20. So with that, as you see, it is very simple and easy to create files. And now, now the cool things happen because now we can just use, for example, also cat and then enter one dot or just, just say uh, two, two dot CSV in dollar I and text file dollar I. And for example, we don't even want to do that just in every fourth. And now if I just, for example, open up, uh, for example, four, there you see now we have something in text file four, but if I just open up six, there I will not find anything because 6 is not in this sequence. This is 0, 4, 8, 12, 16 and 20. And also, <clears throat> for example, if I want to replace this number here. So uh, the entry uh, at 144, I want to replace that. We can do this also with the set command. And so, for example, I copy this, Control shift v and I want to replace it with 25,000. And I press Enter. Now it's being reloaded, and as you see, yes, we replaced, and now for all the text files, this entry with 25,000. So this is very, very handy if you have to do the same operation a lot of times and it saves you a lot of work, a lot of copy paste, a lot of uh, deleting things. Of course, you can also uh, use the command rm here and then delete a lot of files, but be very careful because once you hit enter, you cannot undo the, the, the command. Okay, so now you might ask yourself, Ooh, that's very specific and well, why would I need that? But Promise me next time if you uh, try a uh, start and do control C, control V more than five times in a row, then think about that because this might help you. I know that, uh, that uh, people do use uh, control C, control V with clicks a couple of times and then they copy things 100 times or 500 times and then spend hours on control C click, control V click. I know I did that in the past, but think about that, that you can automate it in Linux and um, reduce the time considerably from hours to a couple of seconds or a couple of minutes. So think about that, please. This, uh, this is a very cool way how to improve the speed of your work. I hope that you liked this video and that you will use it. I would like to thank you for watching and listening and I hope to see you next time.